All right, family, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Fitness Headspace Podcast. We are your hosts. I am Joy Monique. King over here is Deanna Vril. And we're here today, y'all, with another episode. And we're getting, we're coming for y'all food today. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. We're, I hate it. About, we're in the neck hole, in a whole neck hole, y'all. I hate I hate to do it to us though, but we're going for these food labels. So, you know, the food market now has becoming um it's always expanding when it comes to having more health conscious, you know, products now. You're seeing a lot more of plant-based, beyond meat things being incorporated into our restaurants, into our fast food places, things like that. Are coming, they're being more readily available in your grocery stores locally, all that good stuff. And even before we got into this whole you know, lifestyle trends as far as like wanting to eat healthier and everything. Even just our our tried and true, our favorite products that we go to the store and we get all the time and we just love. They taste so good. We feel good after we eat them. And we never take the time to really see what we're eating. So today, that'll be kind of just, you know, doing my, my little deep dive <laughs> into these food labels and really understand what is going on and what are we actually putting into our bodies. And so, of course, we know in general, some processed foods come with those ingredients as far as like the artificial colors, flavors, sweeteners like that. Corn and vegetable oils are very high in like uh, saturated fats. It's not good for your heart health. Um, every kind of sugar, sucralose, uh, dextrose, all, all, all the oses of sugar and the other, um, you know, other preservatives as well. And so, um, do y'all can actually take us into a first of our few ingredients to really like of our most commonly used ingredients that we can see in some of our um, processed foods? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So it's crazy because us talking about this, like. We mentioned this before, going into the store, it's so easy just to pick things up because it looks good. It visually is just appetizing, but really taking the time to look at what's on the label. So mm -hmm. I heard something from a gentleman. He's actually a doctor, um, Dr. Blair. And he had mentioned, he's like, when you go into the store, if you go in and out, <clears throat> excuse me, without actually checking what's on the label, that's a huge concern. So one of the first ones that I at least noticed, and I'm sure you see it too, in a lot of frozen food, but primarily processed food, is sodium nitrate. And the issue with sodium nitrate is the fact that it helps processed meat stop as far as you know bacterial growth, but it does have, or I should say, let's let's be very please, mindful please, of our please, terminology, please. Yeah. right? So first and foremost, we are not doctors, anything of that sort, that whole spiel, but mm -hmm. it has been linked to cancer. There are studies of that, okay? We're not saying that's what it's directly, you know, um, correlating to, but it has been shown in studies by professionals that are in the medical field, all right? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the first things that you will see and pay very close attention when you're looking at your ingredients where exactly they are in which lines because usually within the first few is going to be what it's made up out of primarily the next one blew my mind which was propylene glycol right you probably don't even know how to spell that like we say <laughs> if you can't read it don't eat it and yeah. propylene glycol is used um, as a thickening agent for a lot of like salad dressings so again pay very close attention when you're looking at this list and not only just dressings itself, but for a lot of dairy products. And I've been seeing propylene glycol in a lot of like processed vegan meats as well, but just ve processed vegan stuff in general. Uh, but we're talking more frozen from what I've seen at least. But the crazy part is it's one of the main ingredients to antifreeze. So really think about that. Wrap your mind around the fact of propylene glycol is in food, but it's used as a main ingredient and antifreeze. I want y'all to take a second and think about that. The same thing that Why? keeps your car cool. Right. During the summertime, it's, it's keeping your salad dressing thick. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're putting that into your body. Okay. Crazy. This is used for the car. Your car and your car and your body is not the same thing. You guys don't drink gas. We don't put oil in our body. Well, obviously, we do, well, but we're gonna get to that. We're gonna actually get to that. Right. I was like, but do we though? <laughs> right, right. So the next one, um, <laughs> monosodium glut uh, glutamate and that is short well msg for short is what it is so monosodium glutamate is something that has been used for a flavor enhancer so you'll hear a lot of people say no msg 
when you go to certain places or they have it really big on the bag because it does make a difference. Now, the thing is, you'll find that in a lot of frozen dinners, right? For again, it's a preservative to an extent. A lot of salty snacks, which we're going to do a whole different episode on the psychology of salt, sugar, all that other stuff. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Uh, canned soups uh, and a lot of things that are canned as well, but that has salt or sodium inside of them. But it's known to cause things like headaches. And it's also, again, from what we see and also what's been shown to us through research and study by medical professionals, that it does cause you know uh, damage to your nervous system, causing seizures, and a lot of cardiovascular issues. So MSG is not necessarily just to think that, oh, it makes the food taste good. Like I know places that I go right now, you can buy MSG separately. You can literally buy it separately and people want to use that. I'm like, well, you could just use, you know, pink Himalayan sea salt, iodine, iodized, something besides that. So again, yeah. be very aware of that. The next one, really, really big one. You see this in a lot of, I, would, I don't want to say just this, but primarily in like breads or snacks um, is enriched flour. So we're not talking about whole wheat or things of that sort. So to put in a perspective for everyone, when you're eating something like whole wheat bread and white bread, what's the difference? The color. But what I really want you to think about is the fact of imagine somebody throwing bleach on the brown bed, bread. It's going to turn white, obviously. So what it's doing is it's removing all of the nutrients and it's stripping all the actual nutrients that you need for your body in this case, mm -hmm. right? So why would you want to get something or put something or consume something that has no nutritional value? So although... Yes, you've seen it all the time. We would highly suggest to pay attention to that with all the things that you are consuming. The other one that I want to talk about is sodium benzoate. So, or so, sodium ben, is it benzoate? Ben, benzoate. benzoate. I believe it's benzoate. Yeah, benzoate. Sorry, y'all. Y'all know I'm a little dyslexic. You know, we get them numbers and letters <laughs> mixed up. I'm not even really up, yeah. scientific, like, you know, terminology. So just give us a little grace, y'all, for this episode when it comes to these just words. Just a little wiggle room. <laughs> not super much. But here's the thing, right? It's also used as a preservative. But the preservative itself is used in a lot of, again, sal uh, salad dressings. It's also in carbonated drinks. So when you turn your, your Sprite, your Coke, things of that sort, and Joy's are actually about to tap into that as well, mm -hmm. too, in just a second, you really want to be mindful if that is in there, let alone it is also related to being a carcinogen. So the craziest part about that is the fact that <laughs> it doesn't necessarily just damage, obviously, like internal organs and things. It's going down to the DNA. So we're past the cells at that point. We're talking about the actual structure of you. You get right. what I'm saying? And that's something once it's damaged, it's a, it, I don't want to say it's a wrap. I don't want to sound so drastic, but <laughs> it's something that's not e as easily repair, uh, repair. Yeah. So just be very aware of that. But those are some of the first few that we do have. Um, Joy, go ahead and kick it off. Let us know what you got on your end. Yes. And I'm so glad that you went ahead and kind of like, you know, kind of brought me in into the whole uh, soft drinks, carbonated drinks kind of, um, you know, foods, because one thing I kind of want to mention to you guys is brominated vegetable oil. And you mm -hmm. see that a lot when it comes to our soft drinks, sodas, and it's kind of used to help keep the flavor consistent throughout the entire drink. For one, me personally, be finding vegetable oil in my soda is a little concerning already, <laughs> just within <laughs> itself. Because <laughs> I don't be thinking that we can try to consume, you know, things that Typically, you also shouldn't be cooking with vegetable oil either, but you definitely don't be like drinking it directly. But it actually can be poisonous and cause damage. It can cause birth defects or it can lead to, um, you know, of course, based on what studies have shown. Um, but what's crazy to me is that this is one um, ingredient that's not required to be listed on food labels. And one thing about the FDA is that. For one, American FDA, as far as the, the the agency itself, is a lot more relaxed than other like food health agencies that are overseas. Because a lot of foods that are legal in the U.S. are illegal to be consumed, sold, processed, or whatever like that in Europe, Asia, overseas, and all that kind of stuff, which should be a red flag to us mm -hmm. as well. Because if it's unhealthy for them, it should also be unhealthy for us. And you might find that with like a few foods because... The FDA isn't like it's regulated, but some things are not 
all regulated you know, as far as you know through the FDA as well. So we can't quite, you know, we don't know what we don't know that, you know, certain things don't have to be listed, but definitely want to proceed with caution when it comes to certain um, ingredients. And I'm for all my Splendor lovers out there, I'm so sorry to come for y'all. I'm so sorry to come for y'all with all this super low. I told you, one, one, one of these like these little sugar oses, Splenda, <laughs> you probably should be avoiding as well because that can, you know, over time with continual use, you, uh, you know, lead to liver and kidney damage. I know that at some point it was like marketed to be like the healthier version of like, you know, regular table sugar, things like that. But it's not really the healthiest alternative for that. You're probably better off going with like a... um. What'd you say earlier, Dion? Like um, a monk fruit sweetener. Like a monk fruit sweetener. Um, there's a couple of other ones too, but mainly I would yeah. say monk fruit is a really good replacement if you want that sweet taste still. Absolutely, absolutely. And then right here as well. So red dye number 40. Now this kind of just kind of go along the lines with all the food coloring. They kind of come into one big umbrella, but red dye number 40 is used primarily, like it's the most as far as the food um, dyes. And it's made from petroleum. The white petroleum that you put on your skin when you're feeling like, you know, a little a little dry on the elbows, talking about diesel, gasoline, Chevron with Tecron is what we're talking about <laughs> mm -hmm. right here. So, and of course, you know, consuming that kind of toxic liquid, of course, can, you know, lead to be cancerous towards the body. Um, so definitely like and right down to 40 literally is in a lot of things. Like sometimes it's in meats that kind of give you like that, you know, to kind of give it that real reddish pinkish color on the inside. Um, anytime you see any kind of like strawberry flavored, whatever, cherry flavored, whatever, to give it that red color, you may see red down number 40 listed on the back of the label. So just be mindful of that, you guys. And then caramel coloring um <laughs> bringing it back to the soft drinks i'm coming for your pepsis your coke your coke 40s your diet cokes and all that like i said so sorry um but caramel coloring listing is founded in your like in your uh sodas of course pastries and sauces but this right here is made with one of an of another common household cleaner ammonia it's usually was um, a primary ingredient to how we get that caramel coloring. And this is also another one that's not required to be listed on the food labels according to the FDA. That's the unfortunate thing about it. So I would just say with this one, if it has caramel coloring, just proceed with caution. If you see any other ingredient on there that has your eyebrows raising, I always assume this might also be a part of it, like of the ingredients as well. It's just not really listed on there. Just, you know, um, a healthy uh, caution with that one. This one, bear with me for this word, y'all. Take this one slow. Recombinant bovine growth hormone, <laughs> RBGH. Um, pretty much it's just like the genetically engineered version of a growth hormone found naturally in cows. That's generally what it is. And it's used to kind of help speed up the production of milk for cows as well to keep up with consumer demands. So for those of you guys out there who still consume whole milk, whole cheeses, whole milk products, yogurts like that as well, um, you may see RBHG, sorry, RBGH, <laughs> the growth hormone listed on the back of that product as well. So a good alternative for this is to go for a more plant-based, you know, milk, either coconut milk, almond oak, um, cashew milk could be a good alternative for you guys as well, depending on what's your flavor, because they all have their own, like, you know, distinct taste. Some are creamier, some are a little bit thicker, and kind of fine, whatever your vibe is when it comes to your milk. And then another one that I kind of wanted to uh, touch on, and once again, Bear with me with this word, y'all. Methyl cellulose. You said what? <laughs> What's in the beginning of that word? Methyl. Methyl. That's nasty. <laughs> That's, no. <laughs> Why is that in there? <laughs> the methyl cellulose. Yes. So this is um a variation of cellulose and pretty much used for baked goods. Um, it helps to like it helps to retain the moisture for baked products and pie fillings, meat alternatives. So some of your, um, I wouldn't be surprised if this could be on a Beyond Meat package. It really wouldn't surprise me to keep, because, you know, sometimes when you make vegan alternatives, like if you make them from scratch, you really have to work to keep them like moist and have them, you know, look feel like, you know, tasting tender and everything. So I would, I might check on that packaging for y'all and come back to y'all. So, so if you follow me on Instagram, Stay tuned to my stories. I'm gonna, I might follow up and see if that's actually included 
it's it actually in guard in some of Gardeen's stuff. Not not bashing, but it is in some of their stuff. And I I figured that out the hard way <laughs> after it was purchased. Yeah, yeah. Went from losing. <laughs> but this one does come with its own side effects. So you have it, uh, your irritable, my words today, irritable bowel syndrome, um, issues with swallowing, stomach pain, vomiting, and then um, a sudden change in your bowel movement habits. Maybe it could be a little more constipated than usual, or it could be a little more runny than usual, depending on how your body reacts to it. So even with some of these plant-based alternatives, you definitely want to be cautionary just because... Um, for me, it's you know, you know, kind of like how we always say all the time, like it's, it's better to go with the whole natural foods. That way you know what it is, how it's grown, where it's come from. And honestly, we don't know where some of these vegan alternative products come from and how they taste so similar to me. It could be some of these ingredients that we had mentioned before earlier in this episode that helps to fill in the flavor, helps keep the moisture, helps it to be as close to a meat alternative. That way it still, you know, will, will appeal to the general, you know, um, population and everything. So all things that are healthy are not always healthy. So even with some of these products, definitely look at the back of the packaging. I know they have everything looking so prime and, and, and pretty on the front. Oh, you know, it's meatless you have all this protein is they will you know they they show you everything they want you to see on the front to get you to feel enticed by it. they show you the meat already you know, like you know like you know between two buns looking like a nice sandwich you know everything is plant-based but everything you really want to know all the real tea all the real information is on the back side of it and that's what really like outside of you looking at the actual nutrition label Right below that, you got to read fine print <laughs> when it comes to that ingredients list. And kind of like how Dion said as well, it goes from top to bottom. So everything that's on the top is going to be what it's mainly um, made of. And then it kind of just tears off from there. And so we didn't want to throw too much terminology at y'all within one episode because it's been a lot of my mouth to even keep up with, honestly, with all these oses and cellulites and meth and whatever else <laughs> we've been mentioning in this episode. But we're definitely going to have to do a part two to this one for sure because it's a lot more that I think we need to be able to share with you guys. And then I also have a video giving you guys ways to kind of work around the system a little bit as well. So, um, Dan, is anything else you want to add on for this episode? Because, yes, I agree with you 100% as far as doing a part two because – as we continue, especially, you know, us looking for different alternatives for some of the food that we're eating, yeah, there's a lot that we're learning, you know, throughout this whole time. So it's a learning experience. And I think there's not really a better way than to us do our due diligence, our research, explain to you guys why this is definitely something we don't want to consume. But at the same time, knowing that a lot of the food that we eat in general, specifically, <clears throat> excuse me, specifically packaged food, it's the list is becoming longer. It's really becoming longer. So just be aware yeah. of what's going into your mouth and your body in general. And one thing that I do want to say on that note is that just because it's plant based, like we're you know saying it's plant based, doesn't necessarily mean that everything inside of it, which you already said, is plant based. Plant -based. Yes. And here's the other thing, too. I'll close it off by saying, pay attention to how long your list is. You want that list to be a lot shorter. To be as short as possible. Right. And legible. Again, if you can't read it, don't eat it. Yes. It's, it's, it's really that simple. And I get it because we, we know that taste, right? And we get locked in visually and we'll see that burger. But let me not ruin it for everybody, but we need a wake up call. Go and watch videos on YouTube or anywhere else on the food photography itself and how it's done. You'd be oh. surprised what they use. If y'all watch that video, I promise yeah. it will change how you look at everything. Hmm. Because <laughs> everything you see is not really what it is for the most part, especially in the food industry and how they're displaying it to you. The more appetizing it looks, the more fabricated it is. Guarantee you that. So I'll close off with that. Now I don't have yeah. nothing else to say. Because, you know, to kind of like tear off of that, because we already yeah. know, like, when you see an ad on TV, it's never how we, how it looks when you pull it up in somebody's drive through or going to the restaurant. That's already right. a given. If y'all really look and see, like, how the food, like, you know, uh, photography is made, 
how food is sourced and how it's actually produced. Like really looking to like see how people go about getting milk from cows, how they go about right. raising chickens, especially when it comes to beef and pork. Like y'all see what happens to cows and pigs when they're being um what's the word? Slaughtered. That's the word for animals. So they're being slaughtered for um food products and everything. Like it's a real um crazy process. I had, I had another word, but I was on, that was on a little a little heavy. I'm gonna say it's, it's it's a very crazy process um to witness. So yeah, this episode actually isn't gonna be too too long. Like I said, I didn't want to throw too much science at y'all at one time, which I'm stay awake for the full episode. So <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for the part two. We're going to be actually um, hitting on a topic for next week about all of our fat loss supplements. So if you guys want to learn more about what's really in these weight loss products, I would definitely say stay tuned mm -hmm. to next week's episode. And of course, always hit the like button, share down below with three of your favorite people or even people who you don't like. Just send to me, you know, through a DM, send it just like, hey, I feel like you need to know this. Let me you just share. You, you need the help. I, I can tell by, by you know what you post on your page. You need this kind of information. Let me go ahead don't throw shade. No, don't throw shade. <laughs> how, however you get it to them <laughs> is how you get it to them. And of course, subscribe as well and turn on that bell. That way you know every time you guys that we come out with another episode. And if you haven't already, go to our down below in the description. Follow up our pages. Follow the main pay, a page for Evolve Fitness. to give all kinds of teasers for, that, for the next episode out on there. More amazing content if you guys to be able to you know gain some more value gain some more knowledge and all that amazing stuff and so um if that's all no church announcements then we will catch you guys on the next one bye y'all take it easy family <laughs>